So the next muscle in our muscle series is going to be a classic biceps brachii. Uh, now the biceps we think of as like the big power muscle, the not that I'm very big here at all. Uh, the deep one that we think of as the big belly of the muscle is actually a muscle called brachialis. Biceps brachii comes around that and up and into the shoulder. And so brachialis, which we're going to talk about in a different video, is the big power muscle of the elbow of moving the forearm towards the upper arm. Uh, biceps brachii comes to two different places above here and has a lot, two different heads that come around that. And basically both does uh, flexion of the elbow, but also does flexion of the shoulder. So you've got the brachialis right here that only does the elbow and then biceps brachii, which comes around to the shoulder, does both that and that. And also a tiny bit, very, very subtle because of the two different heads and the attachments, you've got a little bit of ability to rotate the arm in the shoulder socket. It's not a main mover for that. The rotator cuff is really the main involvement in that, but the fact that the two attachments come to two different places and that the two heads of the muscles slide up different lines does mean that you've got a slight ability to control this angle of the arm as well. So on Brianna, we've got the big, bigger power muscle of brachialis that sits down here and attaches to the middle of the humerus and comes down and attaches to the ulna. Uh, for biceps brachii, you've got one on each side, one to the radius, one to the ulna, and then they come up and attach to different places here. We've got two heads that come around. One attaches to the apex of the coracoid process. So the coracoid process is this lovely knob of the scapula that comes through right here. And so a little factoid, most people think of the scapula as this plate on your back, but it has a post that comes through to the front side of the body where the clavicle sits over top of that post and that creates the shoulder girdle. So biceps brachii attaches to the top of that post, apex meaning top. Now the other head comes around and attaches to the superior glenoid fossa. So the glenoid fossa is this uh, is the socket of the ball and socket joint of the shoulder. So the scapula, which is shaped like that with a post that comes to the front, has a little let's call it a socket but it really looks more like a plate with a rim around the edge it's a little flat on the inside and then the humerus has like a shape like this that comes in and moves around in the glenoid fossa right and so the long head of biceps brachii comes around and attaches to the very top of the glenoid fossa so the first attachment to the apex of the coracoid process is fairly easy to palpate. You basically find the coracoid process here and come in right above at the top. And if I press right here and have you flex your elbow, I should feel that, which I do, right under my finger right here. All right, and so that is a simple, easy way to find that one. For the glenoid fossa, you have to get a little deeper into things. And so here's, I'm gonna bring you across this way. Here's the scapula right here from that to here to there in that nice triangle. And here's the humerus. And so right here is the ball head of the humerus. And under here is the inferior part of the glenoid fossa, which is easy to get at. So for traps, triceps attachments, I should say, you can get at that right there. For the very top part of the glenoid fossa, if you externally rotate out here, you have a little bit more space to feel the rim. And so the long head also comes up through what's called the bicipital groove, which is this groove knob. So the, the head of the humerus here actually has like sort of two balls with a groove in the middle that runs right up through there. And there's a bunch of things that attach to either side of that, a whole bunch of different muscles, but the long head tendon actually runs through that groove and then attaches up 
So right, let's see, have you, yep, right up there, you can palpate it and just do a little bit of flexion and release. And that's one way to pin and stretch and get a little release on the muscle. Um, but that's basically where both of those attach. Uh, so if, if I have her, if I start here with the short head, let me have you slowly try to lift your forearm and then extend it back towards the table and then lift and extend there. Now I'm in the right place. I was feeling for whether I could feel the belly, the muscle actually activating under my finger. And it's actually quite thin, right? So you've got this brachialis Popeye muscle. You know, whenever he ate a can of spinach, this would pop up. That is the big power muscle. These biceps brachii are actually pretty long and thin. Um, and then on the other side, if I have you do the same thing slowly, yeah, there it is. And extend. All right, so there's biceps brachii. Let's talk next in the next video about brachialis.